In a grinder market that feels like just a vast, endless sea of flat burr options, the Mix Cool Aries feels like something a little more fresh, a little more unique, both inside and out. And that's what really sort of caught my attention and drew me in at the Specialty Coffee Expo back in April, when I first saw the Aries. And even though I didn't get any footage of it at that point, I did reach out and began a conversation. And quickly I learned that the team behind the Aries is a small group of young coffee enthusiasts from Taiwan who all come from a variety of different professional backgrounds and fields who are looking to bring new interesting and novel ideas into the coffee product world. And about a month ago I was lucky enough to get a visit from Dan and Mike from Mix Cool as they toured around the west coast showing off their new grinder and looking for distributors. And they were kind enough to show me around the Aries and unexpectedly left me with this prototype. But during their visit, of course, we brewed some coffee and we had some chats, but it became pretty clear to me pretty quickly that they have a lot of passion and excitement about their products, about coffee, and to be honest with you, it was very infectious. So today, I'm excited to be able to share more about the Aries with you. So as usual, we're gonna be covering its features, we're gonna be looking at, or taking a closer look at its performance, and of course, talking about its quirks and downsides. So without any further fanfare, let's just dive right into it. I think it's probably fair or safe to say that many, if not most of you, have never heard of this grinder, so let's just get a closer look at its headlines. Considering the Aries is designed for single dosing, at the very top you've got a small hopper which can hold a max of 40 to 50 grams of coffee. And smartly, they also designed it not to allow all the beans to make their way into the chamber all at once, which, as we've seen with other grinders, can lead to a higher probability of stalling and jamming. And also to ensure that there is a consistent flow of beans into the burr chamber, they've put in a small sweeper to assist in clearing out the hopper. As we make our way down the face of the grinder, you've got the adjustment dial, which moves without steps, allowing you to be more precise. But also it has a locking mechanism to avoid any possible float or accidental movement. A little further down, you've also got this discreet built-in knocker to help you with kicking out any possible retained grinds inside the chamber and down into the dosing cup which, as you'd probably imagine, sits at the very bottom of the chamber, is attached via magnets, and is entirely made of metal. Also attached to the same section of metal is the literal centerpiece of the grinder's design, the quick-release burr system, which, with a slight twist to the left, will disengage it from the grinder itself, and pulls out. This exposes the center cone burr on the 83mm set installed inside the Aries. Now, when I asked them who produced or manufactured these burrs, they said that they were under a non-disclosure about that and couldn't really release that information yet. So for now, it's a bit of a mystery, but they do appear to be of a similar blade design and geometry to the other large conicals on the market right now. To reinstall, just guide it back underneath the overhang and push up and turn until you feel its seat. Then give it another gentle twist to the right and you'll feel a light click as it locks into place. And for those who may be concerned about any movement with the center burr during grinding, it does appear to look and feel pretty solid when installed and in motion, so I don't see that as a possible issue point. And on the topic of the burrs, one of the other interesting things about this grinder is, unlike many of the conical grinders I've used in the past that utilize the movement of the center cone burr, the Aries utilizes movement of the collar burr. And before you ask, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, how does having the collar burr spin versus the cone burr actually affect anything? And I'm wondering the same and still trying to figure out a way to test that, so the answer is, I'll get back to you. But speaking of spinning, the last and final feature is the 200 watt brushless motor that has 5 RPM settings, 90, 105, 120, 135, and 150. Since that last section sort of ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, I think it's only fair to address the obvious question that likely popped into your head. With such low RPM settings, have you had any issues with stalling or jamming on lighter roasts? And I'll answer you with this. That is the Aries grinding very dense, unroasted green coffee at 90 RPM on espresso settings, and not missing a beat. Now, with that rather impressive demonstration out of the way, I will say that that is something that I don't regularly do or even recommend anyone doing, but I think it's a good representation that they put in the effort to make sure that this thing didn't jam on lighter roasts, and I think that's the expectation we all should have when it comes to grinders with RPM control. If there is an RPM on that grinder, they should all grind. Now, granted, there is some leeway given when you have um, issues with a control board, which they did have in the beginning. They said that when they first started doing this, they had some jamming issues. They went back into the control board and changed the auto stop to just push through just a little bit longer. And voila, 
problem solved. Anyway, long story short, you can grind any coffee you want on any RPM setting, which maybe doesn't sound like an achievement, but in my experience, it is. And much like RPM settings on flapper grinders, the lower the RPMs, the lower the amount of fines, but it will still produce more fines than your average flats, purely because of the nature of conicals to do more crushing and flats to do more cutting and shaving. Of course, as a single dosing grinder, there is also a reasonable expectation of low retention. And with the Aries, RDT is recommended, as well as utilizing the grinds knocker. And when both are used, I averaged around 0.1 grams on finer grinds and 0.2 grams on coarser, which in my experience is a bit different than the average coffee grinder, but I'll explain more about that in a bit. The grinds themselves are deposited into a blind shaker style dosing cup that fits on a 58 millimeter portafilter and has a nice tapered bottom, which lends to clean dosing into a pour over dripper as well. And personally, I will say that blind shakers aren't really my favorite method or workflow, but the folks over at Mix Cool are also working on some different ideas and methods. But for now, you can still grind directly into a portafilter, but it is a bit tedious and requires a bit more effort to make sure you get all the grinds out with minimal mess. And for those who are curious in terms of the sound, the Aries is pretty quiet, hitting the low 70 decibel range while grinding on the highest RPM and the high 60s with just the motor. And finally, let's now talk about the coffee it brews. As you'd expect with conical burrs and their general higher production of fines, the espresso is very textural and heavy on the mouthfeel, but the overall cup itself is extremely balanced and complex. And when dialed in for traditional shot styles, the flows are very clean, smooth, and viscous. Though I will say on the prototype and likely the current models, I would recommend grinding your espresso on the fastest speed, at least on doses 18 and below. The additional fines created will help keep your flow rate in check, as I did run into a couple instances on my usual 17 gram dose, where the puck itself didn't have the density to hold back the water pressure, even on the finest settings. When it comes to brewing filter coffee, its overall cup profile is very similar to the espresso, with mouthfeel, balance, and complexity being the most apparent. But you can sneak out a bit more clarity at lower RPMs. But if you do that, you should consider grinding a little finer each time you reduce the RPM, to keep the contact time at a reasonable range with your brew method and your tastes. In the end, the Aries really does elevate those dense chocolate, dark sugars, and nutty notes in your coffee, all while reducing the clarity and brightness. So if you're out there chasing those really fruit forward cups, flat burrs are really where you should be looking. A more eloquent man than me once said, every rose has its thorn and every grinder has its downsides. So let's get into them. To start, of course, you can switch from your espresso to filter and back to your little heart's content. But when you're making the switch from filter to espresso, you should either remove the center burr and give it a quick brush or run the grinder while adjusting to the finest setting. Now, the reason for this is because when you're grinding coarse, the center comb burr tends to collect and hold onto some larger chunks of grinds around the bottom edge, which for one is the reason why coarser grinds tend to have more retention but also this can block you from moving to a finer grind and theoretically could affect your next brew. Also, when it comes to adjustability, although it is plenty capable of brewing properly tasty extracted espresso, I would like to see more adjustability within the finer range. As many regular viewers have likely already noticed, I often run 17 gram doses when it comes to espresso and with some of the lighter and more rested roasts, the shots can run way too fast, even on the finest setting. But this is something that they're fully aware of, and it even happened to us during the demo. So I think they're working on a fix for that, and likely it won't even be an issue when it comes to future full production models. Also, the dosing cup, although made of a nice durable metal, I'd like to see the center bell portion be held in place just a little tighter, maybe with some magnets like the one from Option O. The current design feels a little loose and requires you to hold it down when moving it around to avoid a slip and losing some grinds out the bottom. And finally, with its overall focus on the ease of cleaning with its quick release burrs, I wish there was some consideration given to the bar itself. Of course, the base of the grinder, although very nice looking and stylized, has these openings, and they tend to collect grinds and chaff over time, and this makes the center drop point feel very small, so a slightly larger workspace below would be a nice thing to see in the future. In the end, considering this is Mixcool's first attempt at a premium coffee grinder, I am impressed with its overall fit, finish, and performance. By no means does this feel like some kind of rookie entry or something built really quickly to make a buck. There is clearly a lot of passion and thought behind it. 
and their focus on maintaining easy, tool-free cleaning with the ability to quickly and efficiently remove and brush the burrs is something I'll always be excited about. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, this grinder is a prototype, and they are actively making adjustments and changes based on early feedback from their crowdfunding efforts in Taiwan. So I'm sure by the time it hits the global market, hopefully in the next three to six months, a lot of these issues will be worked out. Plus, considering the lack of large conical burrs on the market, its very robust and torquey motor, adjustable RPM, and stylish design, the Aries will likely be on a lot of enthusiasts' wish lists, even at the approximate $1,300 price point. But with all that said, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Aries, and what are your thoughts on what you saw today? Do you have any lingering questions? And do you also think that there is space in the market for more large conical burr options? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support my channel by considering becoming a channel member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.